did I just spend the last year of my life learning a language and the only people who speak it don't want to talk to me because my skin's the wrong damn color for them. Welcome to What's Next. I'm Halo Eden Gray. Um, today, we are going to talk about motivation. We're going to talk about three times that I felt a lack of motivation when it comes to learning the language. I felt like I wanted to give up and how I pushed past those three causes for me. Um, maybe a little bit different than what you might find in other videos, but I wanted to be a little bit more specific in this video. I wanted to talk about things that maybe people don't really like to talk about when it comes to losing motivation. Um, I do think it's really important to stay motivated, to stay disciplined while you're learning a language. A lot of people start down the path and then they give up. So this is the things that have made me think sometimes that I just want to throw my notebook in the trash and say forget it and how I decided to keep going. So I am learning Korean. Um, I started learning Korean back in March of 2019. But prior to me learning Korean, um, my daughter came to me one day and was like, mommy, you need to hear my favorite song by my favorite group. And I am the type of person that if you say I need to hear a song, I will say, Yes. Yes, I do. I want to hear all the songs. Why not? So she played for me, Blood, Sweat, and Tears by BTS. So I'm watching the video and I'm like, okay, yeah, I mean, this is this is a cool song. This is good. A way to go. And I said, uh, is this a K-pop group? And she said, yeah, but they want to do hip-hop and R&B. And I said, Okay, um, that's nice. Um, I wasn't actually asking about the type of music, the genre. I was actually asking whether or not they were Korean. Now, I know that all K-pop idols are not Korean, but at the time, I wasn't really thinking about that either. So when she said yes, one thing popped into my mind. One thought, just one. Koreans don't like black people. Now, two things I want to point out with this. It was significant because really, regardless of what type of Asian, what country of origin they may have been from in Asia, I probably could have said the same thing. Chinese people don't like black people. Uh, Taiwanese people don't like black people. Uh, Vietnamese people don't like black people. Indian people don't like black people. I could have said it regardless. But unlike all those other groups I just named, I don't know any Koreans. <laughs> I'd be hard pressed to tell you if I'd ever actually seen one in real life. And when I did finally see Koreans in real life, for sure, I had to go out of my way to see them. I have zero interaction with them. My, um, I have friends online now through language exchange apps and stuff. And, you know, I have had interactions. But at the time, no. But I knew Chinese people, and I knew Vietnamese people, and I knew Japanese people. So, yeah, I mean, I could have said the same thing about those groups, but I had other thoughts regarding them. Nothing else regarding Koreans. The other thing about that is that I did not verbalize it. I didn't say it out loud because it's not something I want to pass down to my daughter. I don't want her whole thought about a whole group of people that she doesn't know to be that they just don't like her, you know, Especially if I don't know that it's true. If I can't say there was an experience of I, I had or some actual confirmation that of that, I didn't want to pass that on to her. Um, obviously, it was probably something I was taught when I was younger, and I never had anything to counter it, so nothing ever did. So sometime after that, I decided to start learning Korean, and unfortunately, I got that confirmation um, through actually, you know, YouTube various Korean YouTubers who've done videos about how Koreans don't like black people, Koreans don't like foreigners, um, how they don't like white people either, but they're a little bit more accepting of white people than they are of black people, different things like that. Um, there was one particular YouTuber about the end of 2019, uh, a channel that I'm subscribed to, Chili Got Soul, 
she posted a video that was a reaction video to a video uploaded by Korean YouTuber Jun Lee. In the video, it's him with his friends. He's asking them what they think of black women. A lot of ignorant things were said. Um, yeah, it's not exactly the easiest video to sit through if you're a black woman. A couple things that people uh, criticized the video for was, and actually his whole channel, but um, in the video, there was a point where someone said something ignorant about black people and it actually seemed like he kind of chuckled. So it was just like, okay, you're laughing with them. Um, at really, there wasn't really a point where he stood up and defended black people, black women at all. Um, the most was at some point they referred to ra uh, braids or dreads as reggae hair. And he corrected them. And honestly, <laughs> care if other races know what our hairstyles are called like I don't care if you know what this is called it doesn't offend me I don't feel somehow slighted if you don't know what a two strand twist is or a passion twist is or anything like that other criticism was that other videos on this channel where he would talk to black people about their experiences in Korea experiencing racism or whatnot those videos were in English and they didn't have Korean subtitles so Koreans wouldn't really be able to get anything from it if they can't you know if they can't understand English so anyway Shirley got so was upset and she ended up a lot of drama kind of transpired after that that I don't want to get into um but you're feel free to look this up and watch it all but she ended up going live I think on Instagram and in that live she ended up talking to Jim Lee and she asked him a question and his answer is what really really bothered me so she asked him a question he's probably been asked a lot of times before what is the purpose of your channel why do you make these types of videos he even has a video on his channel called why do I make videos about black people All right so he makes a lot of videos like this and a lot of his subscribers are probably black so when he does a video where people are being disrespectful to black people and he doesn't stand up and say this is wrong, I mean, obviously, that's going to be a problem for people. So anyway, um, his response was that he had seen videos on YouTube and those videos had suggested that Koreans actually do like black people. And he wanted to show that that's not true. Most Koreans are racist. And they do not like black people. So let me get this straight. <laughs> That's one video. One video. One video. Koreans don't like black people. Okay, thanks for letting us know. Keep it moving. Do videos about something else. You want to build a whole channel off of that. You want to make video after video after video to make sure that we know they don't like us in Korea. Black people don't come to Korea thinking it's going to be okay because they don't like you. Do you get that? If you don't, it's cool. Because Jun Lee will make video after video after video to make sure you're aware. That's like if we were neighbors and I came and knocked on your door once a week to tell you that my mama does not like you okay i know you might think she likes you because you were leaving the other day and you waved at her and she kind of struck but she doesn't like you don't come over my house thinking it's okay because my mama does not like you okay and you know what <laughs> i got video here's video of her talking about how much she doesn't like you yes yeah, she doesn't like you you got that it's cool i'll be back next week to tell you again why would a person want to do that? I can't. <laughs> That's somehow worse. Like, at this point in my life, I'm just not ever really surprised. Oh, people are racist. <sighs> Go figure. It's not really a big surprise. But the idea that someone would want to make a whole channel devoted to making sure that black people knew that they don't like us in Korea. I don't get that. That doesn't sound like somebody who likes black people and wants things to change or make any improvements. That sounds like somebody who hates black people and wants to keep reminding them that they're not wanted in his country. Um, 
he does have that video like i said about uh why he does videos about black people and in it he mentioned something about how like he's a darker skinned korean person um so he was bullied in like as a kid growing up and i honestly don't understand how that equals making videos about black people it, it seems like it would make more sense to make videos saying about colorism in korea that would make more sense to me um i i don't get it it's almost like he's saying oh yeah i mean i know you don't like me because i'm darker skinned but at least i'm not black I just, I can't understand the reasoning there. So when he doesn't have Korean subtitles on his English speaking videos and people are upset about that, I'm like, why would he have Korean subtitles? He's not making videos for Koreans. He's making videos to make sure that we know that they don't like us in Korea. When he doesn't stand up for black women, people are upset. And it's like, why? He's not here to stand up for black women. He wants to make sure the black women know they don't like us in korea i don't you know what can you expect and he has more than one video like this where he's asking either koreans their opinion on black people or specifically on black women or he's asking black people pointed questions about their experience in regards to racism in korea trying to continually push an a narrative that Koreans are racist and don't like black people and I'm not saying necessarily that that's a true or false narrative I just don't understand why a person would want to build a whole damn channel about it he's not the only youtuber to do videos like that but he is the only one that I know of that has built a whole channel over it but um, a lot of the youtubers Korean youtubers have at least like one video where they talk about um, how Koreans feel about foreigners how they feel about black people etc etc um, for the record I will say this. So he posted another video a little while back at the beginning of this year uh, where he's in there with a, a, a young black woman, I'm guessing is his friend, and they met a Korean sports team, I want to say. And I want to say he did have subtitles, uh, Korean subtitles on the video, and he did explicitly state racism is wrong, don't be racist. So kudos to him for listening to you know his audience and trying to you know make those changes for the better i will continue not to support the channel because the video like any of the other videos is still just about proving the existence of racism in korea and that's not really something that i want to support you know as a whole channel um but obviously this was hard so now i had this confirmation that Koreans don't like black people and hmm did I just spend the last year of my life learning a language and the only people who speak it don't want to talk to me because my skin's the wrong damn color for them well how do I push past that well it's pretty simple for me oddly enough when I decided to start learning Korean it wasn't so that I could talk to Koreans. It's not, I don't have a problem talking to Koreans. Totally want to talk to Koreans. Sure, you know, call me, I guess. Um, but that wasn't my motivation. All right. So I decided to start learning Korean because I heard it was hard to learn. And I was like, <laughs> challenge accepted. I ain't never struggled to learn anything ever. Um, I wanted the challenge. I wanted the opportunity to teach myself a language. Um, this language was really interesting to me when I started learning Korean. Like, I was completely deaf to Korean. Maybe you want to talk to your hot coworker at work and impress them with uh, some words in their native language. But what if they're in a relationship? Or what if they quit or get fired? Maybe you're doing it for work. But what if you lose your job like so many of us have? Maybe you're doing it. Because you want to tell your Opa how much you love his music. <laughs> oh, I have I have no K-pop Opas, guys. Um, I should be a Nuna to every boy. Okay, I'm not. No K-pop Opas here. But maybe you want to tell your Opa how much you love his music. But what if you realize you'll never get that chance? Maybe you wanted to go to another country that speaks the language that you're trying to learn. 
And what if you realize that that's not, that's not going to happen? Maybe you're dating someone who's a native speaker of the language you're trying to learn and you want to communicate with them better. But what if that relationship ends? Do you stop learning the language? Those reasons are fine. I'm not knocking them. I'm not calling them superficial. Whatever reason got you on the path to wanting to better yourself by taking on the task of learning another language, I think it's a great one. I just think that in addition to reasons that are external, that are based on factors that you can't control, have some internal goals. Have goals for yourself that aren't contingent on whether or not people want to talk to you. Um, since I started learning Korean, one of the goals that I did develop was that I got really into Korean hip hop. I'm still like really into it. And I would love to talk to Korean hip hop heads. I would love to, you know, analyze Korean rap lyrics and things like that. I would love to be able to do that and have those conversations and get more into kind of that world. Um, and obviously, if that was my sole goal, to find out that Korean someone is like to me because my skin's brown would, would obviously kill that. Um, so obviously that's not my only goal. And for the record, I know that the obvious thing here is that, you know, not all Koreans, right? Because I know people always want to say, oh, it's not all. You know, I know that's how they want to defend things. And maybe that gives you comfort at night. It doesn't give me comfort at night because it doesn't really matter if it's all. It doesn't have to necessarily be all. It's not ever all women. It's not all men. It's not all black people. It's not all white people. It's not all people under five foot two. It's never all, but it can be too damn many. And when a person wants to devote a whole entire YouTube channel to showing that all of these people in their country is racist, maybe it's too damn many. Okay. And sometimes you just want it to be less, and sometimes you don't want it to be any. Saying that it's not all is not comforting. Also, saying that it's ignorance and not racism, I don't get that. It's not comforting either. If ignorance causes you to look down on, discriminate against, separate yourself from, ignore, mistreat a whole group of people, why the hell do I care if you call it racism or ignorance? Same damn coin, same damn thing. Of course, I do not think that all Koreans are racist. Matter of fact, I actually had the opportunity to collaborate with a Korean YouTuber, and I will drop the link to that video in the description of this video. So make sure you go and check that video out and subscribe to her channel, and she's really cool. So, I mean, there's a lot of cool people out there. Of course, you'll still meet cool people even if you hear that some of those people won't like you because of color of your skin. And it really doesn't matter what race you are or what language you're learning. You can probably come across something where you'll find out that there's people who speak that language that don't like you. Um, but it's not about them. Please continue your journey and don't let it kill your motivation. Let's move on to the next thing. So number two. Now, this one kind of caught me off guard. Um, I had heard about the intermediate wall that happens when you go from intermediate to advanced, at least that's what I think they were talking about, where the language is pretty familiar to you at that point. You could have really decent conversations, and so you're just not really learning as much anymore. And so you kind of hit a wall. You don't keep kind of advancing. You have to push yourself more. Um, so I, I thought, okay, one day I'll get there, and I will be on the lookout for that. But... Um, I wasn't prepared for the wall that I would run into when I went from beginner to intermediate. So I realized back in August of 2019 that I was now at the intermediate level in Korean. Yay, clap it up. Yay, me. And upon that realization, I realized that I could say a lot of different things in Korean. I could make a lot of different sentences. I could understand a lot of different words, had a good set of vocabulary and everything. And then I also became painfully aware that I still cannot communicate in Korean. And the main reason for that is because of my attachment to my own language, to my native language. 
I think that I have something that I like to call Nihao Kai Lan Syndrome or Dora the Explorer Syndrome or Diego Syndrome. You ever watch those cartoons and they'll say something in Spanish and then they'll say it in English too and you're like, why did you, you don't need to do that. It's like, you're going to go to your abuela's house, grandmother's? And I'm like, I don't, I don't like you, Dora. Don't look at me. Don't look at me again, Dora. Please don't. Okay, now. So, I feel like that's the pseudonym of my God. I can say exactly what I mean to say in Korean. Convey the exact meaning that I'm trying to convey. And I don't have that feeling that I fully express myself. Because all I said was some things in another language. Like, if someone says apple, all these thoughts pop into my head when I hear apple. When I hear sagua, nothing, nothing. It, it, it kind of sounds like salt water or swamp water. I know that with Koreans, the fruit that we call apple, they call it sagua. I know what that word translates to in English but I don't have any feelings attached to it. It doesn't bring any memories in my mind. Anytime anyone has loved me and wanted to express that to me, they said specifically, I love you. I love you. When I hear that, I feel loved. When I hear sarangue, I don't feel anything. Kind of sounds like sangria. Kind of makes me want wine. I don't feel loved. I don't feel anything. It's just a word in another language. So it gets hard to feel like I'm adequately expressing myself even when I convey the proper meaning. You can have multiple words in English that all have very similar meanings that might equal one word in Korean. So how do you convey that slight difference in words? And it definitely also happens in reverse. <laughs> you sometimes can feel like, oh my goodness, it's so much, you know. So it happens both ways where you can feel like you said the right thing, but you said the wrong thing and then you feel weird about that. Another thing that happens is, a word will translate into something in the English, but it will be used in Korean in a way that we wouldn't use the English counterpoint. A really good example of this, a word is a really good example of this, is ne. Ne is used for a lot, a lot in Korean, a lot, just all the time, just ne, just whatever. And it translates into yes most of the time. That's the closest trans uh, translation of it. Look up how to say yes in Korean, you're going to get nay and yay, okay? But nay is used at times where we wouldn't use yes, right? When we would say, we might respond in affirmative, uh, an affirmative, but we wouldn't necessarily say yes. We might say, oh, I hear you, I got it, I'm listening, okay, yeah, go ahead, that's right, you're correct. Or yes, right? That's what's up. I agree. All of those different things where we would say something slightly different, you can just say nay in Korean because nay doesn't mean yes nay means nay so nay can be used in ways that we don't use yes anytime you are watching a drama and looking at the subtitles or you're working through a lesson and looking at example sentences in their translation or you're looking up song lyrics what you are actually looking at is the closest interpretation of what's being said it's been kind of difficult because sometimes I come across things that seem super basic, like you absolutely need them to make a, a decent sentence. And I've never seen it before. Here I was thinking I knew how to make a sentence only to realize that I needed this thing that I don't know. But the thing about it is once you learn that thing, your ability to make sentences improves greatly. So I, I look forward to all those things I don't know. I do kind of make kind of an odd analogy uh, for this. So this is what I think of. So imagine you're a mountain climber, right? And 
you're climbing up a mountain. You've been climbing for a while. And at some point, you will get to a point in your journey up that mountain where you shouldn't look down. Because if you look down, you are going to see that if you fall from this point, you are going to die. Unless you are Brad Pitt in World War Z, you are going to die. You're not surviving it. Okay. So you either keep your eyes on the prize, look ahead, keep looking up, maybe just focus on what you're doing to keep going, right? Well, when it comes to learning a language, the opposite is true. Look at what you came from. Don't look at how far you got to go because you look back and you're like, man, I've been doing this for a year. I've just advanced so quickly. I know so much. I'm doing so well. And yes, look how far I have came. And then you look up and you're like, damn, I still got the whole damn mountain. The whole, the whole damn mountain still there. The whole mountain. Yeah. And then you get frustrated and then you're like, nope, this, this too much. Forget it. <laughs> So focus on what you're doing. Look at what you came from a year ago. I couldn't even hear Korean. Now I can half listen to it and sometimes know what's going on. Um, I can make a lot of different sentences. I can say a lot of things that I mean to say, accurately conveying my point across. The only way to continue to progress is to keep going. It is what it is. I know it, it can seem like a lot, but don't give up. And another really cool thing for me, I think, is that when I was a beginner, there was all these things I didn't know, right? Like about Korean, about language at all, how to use it, anything. And I didn't even know what I didn't know, right? Like there were unknown, unknowns, you know? But now there's a lot less unknown unknowns but a lot more known unknowns. I don't know why it amuses me to say that, but <laughs> that's reality. I'm aware of all these things that I don't know. And because I'm aware that I don't know them, I can specifically seek them out to learn them. You'll start to learn that certain things can be used at certain times. And that's something that you don't really realize as a beginner, that there's these all these conditions. As you advance, you realize now that there's all these conditions. And yes, sometimes formulating what you want to say takes a little bit longer because you have to make those considerations. But at least now you know to make those considerations. So now you can communicate more effectively. So let's move on. So the third thing is probably just singular to me, but I'm going to share it just in case you have ever felt it and it got to you. Maybe I can be of help. So the third motivation killer for me is just how Koreans treat Korean celebrities. But I can't wrap my head around it like at all and so like recently a little while back there was a k-pop idol that announced that he was getting married and hinted that he had a baby on the way well i found out recently that baby is now in the world it was a girl congratulations to him all right and i thought oh well that's great cool You're getting married and having a kid and way to go and people responded by calling for him to leave the group. They sent merchandise back to his agency. They said he showed no remorse and that he had betrayed them. They protested against him. I read multiple articles just trying to understand what the hell they were mad at. Like I was just like, I don't even know why you're upset. I, what happened? I'm confused. Like most of the time, even with, you know, some idols that I really like, they did some illegal stuff, you know. And in America, that wouldn't be a big deal. We we would still love you. Like you'd be a crackhead. We'll be like, ah, but you can sing. No, go on, sing it. You know, we won't even care. But, and I know that's different in Korea. Y'all mad because... 
he said he did something illegal. Like, I, I want you to forgive him, but it's okay. I understand why you're upset because that person did an illegal thing. That's not okay. I got it. But what breach of contract is getting married? Like, what is what law is a person breaking by getting married or dating or any? Like, I don't, like, I am baffled by it. Like, I don't even understand it. And so then on top of that, the other thing that bothers me is that idols sometimes cater to it. And I just, it, it, it blows my mind. So like, because you'll say, oh, it's not all K-pop idols. And those are just, you know, K-pop uh, fans. And those are just some young, immature fans and blah, blah, blah. I hear that all the time. But it's too damn many. It doesn't have to be all. When the idols themselves are catering to it, it it's too many. They have way too much control. Like the idol... They signed up for that life, but their friends and their family did not. And it's kind of baffling to me. I really wish that the, like the bigger name idols would, you know, speak up because they have a lot of fans outside of Korea. So even if they take a hit with their Korean fans, they still have a lot of fans outside of Korea. But I know it's like really hard to do that. I mean, it's hard to like go against you know, your country or whatever to say something that might upset people in your own country where you live and all of that. But I really wish they would say more. And a couple of idols have recently, um, idol is the real MVP. He, uh, the, I'm, I'm not naming names, right? But if you know, then you know, right? So he put out a statement, I guess there was some scandal about him meeting like a younger idol. I guess it was a female idol. I don't know. But anyways, he was like, I was about to let it slide and just go on with y'all's comments and everything, but y'all need to find something to do. You need to find a way to be more productive, a better way to handle, like, your anger, because this ain't it. <laughs> and I was like, you are the real MVP. These are the things that I exactly think, man, the, like... There are people dealing, idols dealing with depression, mental health issues, panic attacks. They're feeling isolated. They're committing suicide since what? I've been listening to K-pop now for a little over a year. And there's been like four suicides in that time. It, it's too much. It's just a perspective that I can't understand and it just highlights how different the perspective can be and a lot of times it can be hard to like overcome that feeling of like what if i just can't understand these people like oh my goodness what if i can't connect with these people like i'm learning this language and what if i just can't connect with the people who speak it so for me how i keep going when this happens and i think any video that talks about motivation has to mention discipline Motivation can and will probably fail you at times. There's so many reasons out there to get motivated, so many reasons to be demotivated, and it's the discipline that's going to carry you through those times. Um, at this point, most of the music I listen to is in Korean. At this point, a uh, considerable amount of the shows that I watch are in Korean. Um, when I get on YouTube and I get those little recommendations for videos, typically in regards to learning Korean. Um, there's apps on my phone. The games and apps that I use on my phone are Korean. It's a part of my daily life. It would be really hard for me to just be done with it and throw it away and just not do anything with it because I'm going to, there's going to be something that I'm doing in regards to learning Korean. Um, also having a routine. Now, I would come in from work, and my routine for the longest time was basically to come in from work, get some food, sit down, and start working on my grand. So my daughter sometimes would be like, Mom, let's play video games. Well, she said she calls me Mommy. So she'd be like, Mommy, let's play video games. And I'd be like, oh, okay, yeah, let's do that. But you got to wash the dishes first. And she's like, okay, I'm going to go wash them. And when she came back up, I would have all my Korean notebooks out. I'd be running through a lesson, taking notes. She'd go, hmm. Lost her to the Korean again. <laughs> so it was, you know, that's, 
it was because that was what I did at that time. It, you know, this time on the clock hit and what would I be doing at this time? I would be looking at my notes. I would be taking more notes. I'd be making example sentences. I'd be running through vocabulary. Um, and so I didn't do that. I didn't know what the hell to do with myself. So just not even thinking about it, I just start pulling things out and okay, well, yes. Oh yeah, remember I wanted to know how to say that. Oh wow, that's, you know what? I was going to watch that one video. I'm about to watch that now. You know, and it was just kind of automatic. This is what I do at this time. It's just part of my routine. Um, even when you don't feel as motivated, a lot of times with having a routine, you can at least get started. Uh, if I get started, I might not spend the hour, two hours, or three hours that I'd spend any other day. I might spend 20 minutes, but at least I spent 20 minutes that day. And maybe I learned another word, or maybe I learned another sentence structure, or, you know, anything. So, I say, making it a part of your routine, making sure at that time that's what you're doing, having that discipline... It will carry you at those times when you just come up against something and for some odd reason it just makes you feel weird and you just don't feel like it today and you know, you're just going to go do something else with your life. It's, I like to set goals for myself each day. So I say, okay, I'm going to get to through like this page in this text, right? So I'm going to get to page five and do one to five today. Like, you know, or I'm going to focus on these 20 words. I'm just going to keep going until I know these 20 words down pat, or I'm going to write these many sentences or whatever. Those are my three times that I felt uh, like I wasn't really motivated anymore. And I kind of felt like maybe I wanted to give it up, but I decided to stick with it. Um, at this point, like I said, I am at the intermediate level. Um, obviously that still leaves a lot, right? Like still working on pronunciation, still working on, you know, grammar and things like that still a lot of words i don't know still a lot left to learn but i definitely feel motivated to keep going and i hope that whatever language you're learning that you will keep going now it is time for the share with the class portion of this video and there will always be a share with the class portion of the video you have to stick around to the end of the video to get to that point remember to like share subscribe comment your answer to this okay so i want to hear that thing you learned in your language that you're studying that was like an aha moment for you like you learned it and you just felt like oh my goodness i get it now or you just felt like you just learned so much you know it was just that thing that just took you to the next level in your learning so for me it was a uh, noon Okay, so Nungo is something that you absolutely need to make a, dec a decent sentence. Like, yeah, like you absolutely need Nungo. Like if you want to tell your opa how much you love his music, you need to know how to use Nungo. Okay. And <laughs> when I learned that, I was like, oh my goodness, you can make such more complex uh, sentences once you learned it. So that was the aha moment for me. And, hmm, stay healthy and what's next?